what exactly that I have with respect to the unit testing of currency conversion program. I have two events in the diagram. The first one I will call it as a input event. The second one is what I will call it as a output event. I should take the inputs from the system level, use every port input and also use every port output. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on GUI testing. In my last session, I have explained in detail about a currency conversion program. So guys, so the continuation of that topic, I will be discussing with respect to this session. So guys, what is that I have then in this session? So you must be thinking, right? So yes, the same example I would like to take to explain the concept of GUI testing. So but Remember, I will be discussing the currency conversion problem with respect to the unit testing, integration testing, and also system testing. So guys, without wasting much of your time, let me get into the session. Yes, when it comes to the system testing, so guys, it is very important that we all look for the performance rather than the fault. But let me start with the unit testing. What exactly that I have with respect to the unit testing of currency conversion program. I want you all to please listen to me carefully. So this is the GUI that I have with respect to the currency conversion problem. Yes, let me speak about the buttons first. So why are you speaking about the buttons first? Because I always treat or I always feel that the buttons is very suitable for unit testing is what you need to understand here. Let's understand with respect to the compute button. So guys, for each and every button that I have in the GUI, so I have given a special code for each and every button to perform its task. Sir, why are you mentioning I here? I means I would like to say that I in the sense it's a user. User would have given or the programmer would have given a special code for each and every button. So whenever I perform an action, so definitely you can expect an event to occur. So fine. So let's understand how exactly the unit testing is working for each and everything that I have here, especially with respect to the compute button. If I want to check the functionality of compute button, so obviously this compute button is totally related to the values that I have in this text boxes. So what happens with this? Say for example, if I press the compute button, obviously I will be getting an error message. Suppose if I have not entered any value in the US dollar amount. That is the first thing that you need to check. The second thing that you can expect is instead of entering the valid values in the US dollar amount, I would have entered some negative values or I would have entered the values in a different format. Say for example, I would have entered some text or I would have entered some other garbage value at that particular point of time. So your button should give you an error message when you click a compute button. So that is what you need to remember at this point of time. So fine. So guys, so at this point of time, so we all feel that we need. So functional and structural testing should also happen in this level. That's what you need to remember at this point of time. So fine. And also I have two possibilities. The first possibility that I have is I will be writing a stub. So or I will be writing a driver which will help me to give the input and also it should be able to test the output what I have got with the actual values. That is the first possibility. Now when it comes to the second possibility, so please remember I should take the inputs from the system level. Sir, when you're performing the unit testing, how do you take the inputs from the system level? Won't it look contrast? Obviously it look contrast, but I have to take it. So why? You will ask me, what is the reason for that? Listen to me carefully. So guys, whenever I take the inputs from the system level, that's going to be more important. So I have many reasons for that. So what are the major reasons that I have? So I want all of you to please listen to me carefully. So first reason that I have here, guys, when it comes to that, what exactly happens? The computation might be correct. So please observe, the computation might be correct, but it is not, you know, a guarantee that you will get the actual result. You might end up in getting the fault as an output. So that would be one of the major reasons that you need to remember. And it is very difficult to read or to go through all the test cases and to record all the result what you get in the test case is what you need to remember at this point of time. So that's going to be very, very tedious. And I cannot run the test cases again and again, again and again for each and every 
thing that I have in my GUI. That's going to be very tedious for me. So that is what you need to remember with respect to the unit testing of a GUI. So find what exactly that I have with respect to the integration testing. So with respect to the con currency conversion problem. So guys, when it comes to the currency conversion problem, mainly I will be focusing on the compute button, right? When it comes to the compute button, so I have given the if conditions. So how exactly this if conditions is working? You need to remember and you need to recollect. So I have the different countries with the radio buttons is what you need to remember. Radio buttons, sir, why are you specifically mentioning the radio button? If I say radio button, I can select only one. I cannot select multiple countries at the same time is what you need to remember. Yes. So in that case, how exactly my compute button is working? So please observe carefully with the snippet or the pseudo code that I have here. So guys, if I have selected the option as Brazil, so please understand, so this code will be executed. What exactly that I have? So I will be converting my currency Brazil rate into US dollars amount. So this is how I'll be calculating. Suppose if I have not selected my country option as Brazil, so I would have taken some other option that could be option Canada. So if that is the case, I would have used this formula or I would have executed this block of code. Suppose if not I've selected the Canada, I would have selected the Europe, so European Union. So if that is the case, I would have executed this code. Suppose if I would have selected Japan, I would have executed this. So I will be using this kind of options if I'm performing the integration testing is what you need to remember. So fine, sir, but we are discussing with respect to the object oriented thing, right? Then in that case, how do you represent it? So this is a normal pseudo code, but when it comes to the objects, how do you do that? So guys, when it is a concept of object oriented thing, I would have represented like this. It's much similar. It is very easy for all of you to understand. I just have to use the concept of objects here. That's it. So observe here carefully. Object option is Brazil. If that is the case, your parameter will be US dollar exchange rate. So that will be your parameter. And then, so what exactly happens? Private procedure, sense click. If you click that button, all right? So command compute. So you will be able to compute the command. So US dollar exchange rate. So this will give you the conversion result and then you will return the value. So that's what you need to observe. So this will happen for all the countries and the calculation will happen in this function is what you need to observe. All right, so all these procedures I will be using, you know, in the concept of object oriented thing is what you need to remember. So fine, we understood the normal pseudo code, we understood the object oriented thing. What happens if I get the concept of GUI? So if I get the GUI, so I have some predefined values. If you select the option, aut automatically I will be passing the predefined values here. That's what you need to observe here. So whenever you ask for a union, uh, Europe Union, so I have the exchange rate predefined value. I have set it, so I will be passing. So for all the countries, I have got the predefined exchange rate values. It is already fixed and I have that in a variable. So I will be returning that you know, directly is what you need to understand at this point of time. So finally, we understood the normal pseudo code. We understood the object oriented thing. And also we understood the GUI. What next that we have to understand? So guys, you have to understand the concept of system testing with respect to the currency conversion program. When it comes to the system testing, it's very important that you need to understand these three diagrams. Along with that, I will also speak something about the threats in the coming slide. What exactly that I have with respect to that? So guys, let me make this uh, diagrams very simple and easy for all of you. This diagram is all about the EDP program. That's what you need to remember, which I have already discussed in my previous video, what exactly that I have about the EDP. All right, so guys, this diagram is all about the Petrinet. So you need to understand, I think hope all of you know about what exactly Petrinet is all about. So we have already discussed even Petrinet also in my previous sessions. Let me make this diagram very easy and comfortable for all of you to understand. So what exactly that I have? Let me just show you the table first. So if you understand this, the diagram will be free for all of you because easily you'll be able to trace what exactly is happening in the diagram. So guys, I have two in events in the diagram. The first one, I will call it as a input event. The second one is what I will call it as a output event. So fine, uh, I have P1 and uh, I have S1 to, uh, I have S8. 
and I have D12, D8. So P12, P25. What exactly P is all about? What exactly S is all about? What exactly D is all about is what we have to understand first before we get into this diagram. P in the sense it's a port, it could be input port or it could be output port. That's the first thing that you need to remember. So fine, D in the sense the data where you store, yes in the sense it's a sequence or the transition that it happens in the petri net is what you need to understand. So fine, I have 25 ports, so I have the ports which comes under the input event, I have the port which comes under the output event. So fine. And also I have the sequences which comes in the ASF, ASF in the sense atomic system functions. I have already discussed about ASF, what exactly ASF is all about. My dear students, ASF in the sense atomic system function, a function in the sense a system which performs only one task, that is what I will call it as a atomic system functions. All right, so fine. Uh, let's understand what exactly that you have here. So hope you have the enough basic knowledge about the table, right? So fine, I have P1. So P1 in the sense what? So please observe, I have P1. P1 in the sense enter US dollar amount. So that's the first thing that you need to understand. Come to the diagram now. So observe here, P1. So this is the input. So whenever you have inward triangle, so this, that's the meaning of input okay you are giving this input to the system is what you need to understand the output is getting stored in the data center is what you need to understand with respect to the d1 so what is the meaning of d1 so you are getting the p1 as an input so that is going to be you are entering the us dollar amount and you are giving the output to the d1 d1 in the sense what please observe so us dollar amount is entered that's what you need to remember that's our d1 all right, the same way. So let's trace the second one. Let me just help you to understand the second one. So guys, this is the S1, sequence one. All right, this is the sequence two. Let's understand this, what happens. I have the input as P2. What is the meaning of P2? Click on Brazil. You're trying to click on Brazil. So yes, you're done with that. So output is P10. What is the first one that you have? P10 is your output. So P10 in the sense, guys, display the Brazilian reels. So that is the first thing will happen. Then after that, P15 is your output. So what is the meaning of P15? So indicate Brazil. So that's the second thing it's going to happen. What is the third one? It's going to happen P19. P19 in the sense reset Canada, Europe and Japan. So that's how third thing it's going to happen. The fourth thing is you're trying to store in the data. What is the D2 country selected? So this is how. So you will be comparing the Petri net diagrams that I have here one by one with the help of this table. I want all of you to please take a screenshot of the table that I have here so, so that you can analyze each and every diagram one by one in detail. So that is the first thing that you have to do it. So fine. So let me show you the third one. So after that, let me explain how exactly four ASF is combined in this diagram. What is the third diagram that I have here? What is that? I will consider it as an input. So can you all tell me now? Yes, of course you can tell me that is P3. What is the meaning of P3? Click on Canada. If, you, if I click on Canada, what is the output that I will have? So P11. So that is the first output that I can expect. So P11 in the sense what? Display Canadian dollars. So that's the first thing. P16. P16 indicate Canada. Then after that I have P. 20, what is the next one? P20, reset Brazil, Europe and Japan. And the next one that I have is D2, D2 in the sense what country selected. Same thing will happen for all other countries is what you need to remember with this diagrams. So fine, now please observe, this is the four different ASF that I have, which I'm trying to combine. So this is the diagram that you need to follow to understand how exactly four ASF is getting combined with the help of EDP is what you need to observe in this diagram. So all of you know that. So this represents the input. Okay, this is the output and this is the data and this represents the output here. So that's what you need to remember here. So S1 in the sense sequence one, sequence four, sequence seven and sequence six. So you'll be able to understand sequence one in the sense what, sequence two in the sense what the complete information is given in this table. This is how we will be able to understand how exactly the system testing is happening with respect to the GUI testing. Moving forward, I will be speaking with respect to the threats also. When it comes to the threats, I want you all to please understand. So when it comes to the threats, so please understand this begs a question for what consists 
suitable. There are some of the possibilities that you need to understand every. So please understand, use every atomic system function. So that's the most important thing that I need to understand. Whenever I'm considering a thread, I need to use all the atomic functions is a very important point. So that is the first thing that you need to understand. Use every port input and also use every port output. That's the most important thing that you need to understand. So fine, if I use all the ASF, if I use all the ports, and if we use all the output, so I have to use everything that I'm not leaving out anything. That's the most important point that you need to remember here. And also I'll be mainly dependent on the directed graphs with respect to the ASF. So which depicts, you know, S1, S2, S3, S4, S6, S7, S8. This is a directed graph that you need to understand. So this depicts the sequence, how exactly the system is working. So that's what you need to understand. So with respect to this, let me discuss in this next slide. So guys, I have got four threads here, which they have you know, depicted thread one, thread two, thread three, thread four. So they have given the different sequence for each and every thread, thread one, two, three, four. Okay, they have given. So fine, we understood that. So first sequence one will happen, six, sequence four will happen, six will happen, seven will happen. The execution is what they are trying to explain. So what exactly sequence is all about? So you did not speak about it. So you need to understand the expected execution is what I will call it as a sequence. Expected execution method is what you can understand it as a sequence. That's what you need to remember. I have explained this even in my previous session also. So guys, so fine, we will follow this. This is a predefined path, different paths that I will get. But as soon as I move to the different paths, say for example, when it comes to T5, I will get these many. So it's a good example is what they say. When it comes to T6, also fine, I'll get this many path. But when I go on, so when it comes to the T7, I will come across with the indefinite sequences. That's going to be very, very difficult. And I cannot keep testing every possible ways and everything. So I have to keep reducing some of the things. Right? So that's the most different, difficult part that I have here. No, I cannot have the threads, you know, too many threads. It'll create a lot of cumbersome when I'm performing the testing is what you need to understand. So to solve this problem, we have got the incidence matrix. So this will solve the problem of the thread sequencing. All right, that's what you need to remember. So guys, this is the end of this session and I end this chapter in this session. Thank you very much.